Um, I mean, I've always watched film, especially in the playoffs, the extensive amount of uh, minutes, my minutes, our team minutes, the way they're they're playing me, the way they're playing our team. Um, every game calls for different, you know, situations. And uh, tonight, I just you know wanted to try to be aggressive, you know, you know, and uh, see if I can get into the paint, see if I can find my guys. Um, and I was able to do that early, get to get to the line, even though um, I missed a few of them early on. But I felt like I had a good rhythm, and uh, just try to you know. Just try to make plays, like I said, for, my, for, for myself and my teammates. Uh, so tonight you passed Tim Duncan for third or for seconds in all-time playoff wins. <laughs> you have one East Kevin. It's just Derek Fisher that's left at 161. Knowing how difficult it is to win in the postseason, just, can you put that in perspective? That that total amount of wins that you have. Um, I mean, I get it. I get asked the question a lot, you know, and it's just um, it's just always surreal for me um, when my name is associated with any of the greats. And obviously, we know how great Tim Duncan was. Um, in this league, uh, you know, with that with that franchise, I had my battles with him. Also, was a teammate with him um, in the Olympics, and just um, just seeing, you know, what he was able to accomplish, you know, not only um, in the regular season, but more importantly in the postseason. And uh, he li basically he lived in the postseason. You know, that that was his address. You know, so um, you know, for, for for me to be linked with uh, with the great and, and the big fundamentals, it, it means a lot, um, not only to myself but my hometown. Um, and, and whoever, you know, has been following my career. Hey, LeBron, it's Dave. I want to stay on the Duncan line of questioning. Uh, obviously, you played him three times in the finals. 2007 was the first time. And there was that moment you guys shared after game four. You're going up to the podium, and he grabs you and says, this is going to be your league someday. Um, one, what did that moment mean to you in the moment? And also, going further, did the way he handled you uh, with grace as an opponent, did that have any effect on you, the way you've um, – you know, kind of interacted with opponents throughout your career? Um, how did I feel at that moment? We had just got swept, so I didn't feel great about it. I actually felt like shit. And, uh, and he gave me a, a smile by saying that. Um, so, um, but at the same time, I was still just thinking about, you know, was it something I could have done better in those four games that kind of helped us win a game? Obviously, I knew that they were the better team at the end of that, uh, at the end of that series, and they showed it. Um, and for me, I've always, I mean, no, I, I don't think that had anything to do with how I handle my opponents or people. I, I've always been that way, um, you know, throughout my whole life, um, you know, just, just my personality, um, you know, um, it's just who, I, who I've always been. And, um, you know, having so much knowledge of the game, the game has been given to me from my little league coaches and my, uh, my AAU coach, coach Drew Joyce, my little league coach, Frank Walker, um, Keith Danbrot, and they just gave me so much game. Um, not only not only on the floor, but also off the floor. So um, when you have that type of knowledge and you continue to grow over the years, I feel like it's very important for me to, to give back to the next generation if they need it, um, when they want it. So um, that's just who I've always been, um, you know, from, from day one. Hey, LeBron, uh, shifting back to tonight, um, where, what has been the key to you guys uh, kind of summoning and maintaining this defensive intensity against, against their firepower? And um, specific to like just the series, has, has it allowed you guys to kind of find your offensive rhythm throughout the games? Because it's kind of presented itself in different ways, but the defense has been pretty solid throughout. Well, I mean, from the first day of training camp, we wanted to be the best defensive team in the league. So nothing has changed. No, the mindset has not changed. We've had some explosions offensively this year, um, before COVID, obviously. But you know, the main thing has always been the main thing, and that's the defense. And um, and that's just a who we has always been. And there's going to be games where your offense just don't you just don't make shots. You don't play well, but you have to be able to defend and give yourself an opportunity. So that's just who we've always been. That, that has not changed from um, the first day we stepped on the floor of training camp. Kyle Goon. Uh, LeBron, uh, in, in 80 has talked so much about how many cues it takes from you, um, my value to your experience. In, in a literal game like this, uh, how, how much do you sense that your aggressiveness on offense or your aggressive approach on any part of the game kind of coaxes him into being his most aggressive self? So. Um, I don't know. I think we um, we definitely work well together <laughs> for all the uh, questions going into the season of, you know, if, if myself and, and AD can work well together, I think we've shown that throughout the course of this season. So. Um, but we just try to work off one another. You know, there's going to be times where, you know, just like in game two, uh, he had it going. Um, he carried us, he had it going, and I just tried to uh, do other things to make sure we keep our offense flowing, keep our pace going, things of that nature. But he had it going in, uh, 
you know, we wanted to continue to go back to them. Um, tonight, we both had our opportunities and we just tried to make the most of it, you know, putting our teammates in position to be successful, um, you know, doing the right things and making the right reads, um, you know, and, and, and living with the results. Mark Medina. Um, because we are, uh, we're two guys who know who we are. We know who we are as human beings. We're not trying to be nobody else but our own identity, our own selves. And when you know yourself and you're confident in what you do, both on and off the floor, and you know what you represent, then there's no, there's no ego. There's no ego. We just we want we want both of us to succeed, both on and off the floor. We want our families uh, to to be happy. Um, you know, we want each other to try to be as happy as possible. But there's no egos. So when you're able to um, figure that out, like in life, who who you are and what you what you stand for, then. Nothing else matters. Joe Burke. Oh. Well, I just, it was a follow-up to that specifically. Um, did you know that he, that you guys, that he was like that before you guys started playing together? Nope. What did you guys start to say? Um, probably, I mean, I guess as soon as we, you know, we, we got the trade, the trade became official. When the trade became official, he came to LA. Um, we started started right from there and see, see what was there. And uh, you know, you know, like I, I'm, you know, I'm big in like um, energy and, um, and and people and knowing. Um, you always hear this term like good vibes, um, but I'm I, I truly can sense it. And uh, it was very organic. It was nothing. Um, you know, pushed or, or rushed or whatever the case may be. We just let it happen. We let the relationship happen organically. And it's just grown over the, over the course of this whole year. Joe Barton? I think it's your shared Midwestern values. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. Um, does it feel like you guys are getting back to who you are as Lakers? Uh, I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, we want to get better every game throughout this series. Um, we played um, extremely well in game two. Um, we played really well tonight. There's still some things we can get better at, and we know that Portland's going to be better in Game Four, and um, we have to have that same um, um, the same mindset going into Game Four, um, knowing <clears throat> that we're desperate and they're desperate as well, and, and who plays and, and who follow their keys and, and makes um, the least amount of mistakes uh, will will become victorious. So, um, you know, you, you, every game, like I said, has its own challenges, and we begin to to prepare for them. Um, um, tomorrow, and watch. We're gonna watch a lot of film, and see ways we can get better, um, and, and do the things that we that we want to do. Um, and they're gonna take you take you out of things. That's what the postseason is all about. You will be taken out of things, but how can you counter from that and be able to still be, um, you know, productive out on the floor for 48 minutes? So we look forward to the challenge. Last question, Taylor. I just think my, my, my pace, um, my offensive pace tonight, um, you know, at times I was, you know, fast, uh, slow, um, you know, medium, you know, medium pace. It was like a, it was like a stick shift, you know, I, there was times I was in gear one, there was times I was in gear six and being able to just read and react depending on if I was, in, you know, in a school zone or if I was in a residential area or if I was on the highway, um, if I was on the straightaway, you know, so, you know, being able to have a car that can go into different um, speeds and go into different uh, um, you know, zones, depending on what the, what the traffic is, is very key. So um, I think that was you know, very important on the positive side. Um, I think on the negative side, um, I had some, some very careless turnovers um, that I can get better at. And, uh, and when you go to the free throw line, you got to hit those free throws. So um, I got to do a better job of both of those on that side.